Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best Yugi tuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. Hi guys, this is Joe here, commonly known as Rufio. Welcome to an introduction video to Shadows. My plan today is to give you a short guide on how the deck is played, what some common play cards are, and what kind of stuff you can do to learn to better yourself with the deck to get started, or to learn to play against it, of course, as a whole. I'm going to cover a whole ton of things, although this is a cult follow deck, so most people do already know how this works, but that's one of the reasons that people who don't know how it works would like to get into it. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome aboard. If it's not, why the fuck are you back again? <laughs> this channel's terrible. I don't know why you're here. So thank you very much for checking in in any case. If you haven't already, I would implore you to hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment down below. If there are more of these videos and maybe you enjoy it that you would like to see, then do let me know in the comments. If you'd like to see any of these for a specific deck that you play or any of those things, then go ahead and drop it down in the comments. Leave a thumbs up. Let me know that you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much again for checking in, guys, and we'll get stuck right in. So as we're getting started, I'd like to give you a quick introduction into Shadows, how they came about, and a little bit of a backstory so that we can sort of set the scene for what this deck is about. Shadol was introduced to us in the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG in Duelist Alliance back in August 2014, with support following across various releases since then. Doorless Alliance is considered one of the most impactful set releases in the game's history, alongside the likes of Invasion of Chaos, Phantom Darkness, and more recently Flames of Destruction. And she's also a huge part in the strength of the set. It's also worth noting that the set contained the support and debut of several other archetypes, including Telenite, Yangzing, and one of my personal favourites, Burning Abyss, which is testament to just how strong Shadows are, that they stuck out like a sore thumb throughout this absolutely crazy format. The story behind the Shadol monsters essentially surrounds there being something in the abyss of the dual terminal world known as the Shadol Core. The Shadol Core is responsible for creating shadows that absorb anything they touch, and these shadows are known as the Shadols. The shadows created by Shadol Core are controlled by El Shadol Construct, who uses the strings, as can be seen on her back, to control them. The shadows corrupt and consume whatever they encounter, and as a result of this defilement is the monsters we see in the Shadol archetype. The Shadol archetype has a cult following that has existed since its inception, and this continues even today with the deck seeing an explosion of play most recently, with the new support released, mostly in conjunction with Invoked, as part of the Shadol Showdown structure deck, considered one of the best structure decks released in the game's history. All of this, and with Master Rule 5 now having arrived as of this month, you can bet the Shadows are here to stay. A fantastic budget-friendly deck that you can use at most levels of competitive play. So what is it that makes Shadows so popular, and how is the deck played? The Shadol archetype essentially focuses on turbo monsters into the grave, which generate advantage as well as pushing into the El Shadol fusion monsters, which control the board and apply huge pressure to the opponent. The deck largely falls into a position of being a control deck, but it is worth noting that it can produce huge board presence fairly quickly, meaning it plays while both going first and second, something that is testament to the deck's versatility and strength. All of the Shadol monsters appear as corrupt versions of the monsters they have tainted from the dual terminal world or other various cards, but mostly the monsters, which is reflected usually in their appearance and stats, including their attribute, which allows them to go into specific fusions that the player would like to have access to, something that has made them incredibly popular when splashed into other decks as well as giving them a huge number of options to work with. Essentially, anything that benefits from being dumped into the graveyard will enjoy working in unison with the Shadows, a playstyle that has only continued to increase in power over time. The Shadol cards are often used as an engine too, alongside other decks, making a powerful package to complement a variety of other engines. An example of this would be the likes of Dino Dolls, which sees a small selection of Shadows, usually around 3 to 4, which allows you to add extra deck power going second that can easily dump other dinos into grave and gives you an additional play option going first as well with the likes of Winder on your end of plays to help prevent your opponent from cracking your board. Next we're going to do a rundown of the Shadol cards and what they do and afterwards we'll take a look at some of the commonly played cards for the deck. 
I'll also include the corresponding corrupted card for each one too, just so you can kind of see where it comes from. As a first point of note, shadows have two effects, a flip effect, as well as an effect that's activated when they are sent to the grave by a card effect. And it's worth noting at this point in time that they aren't activated if they are sent as cost. Each shadow can only activate one of their effects per turn, meaning you can't activate both the flip and grave effect in the same turn. They're also hard ones per turn, meaning that you can't use multiple copies of the same card to bypass this effect. As a quick note before we get started, I do just want to let you know that I'm kind of just shoveling the main information from these cards. So the text won't be exactly as it is as written on the card. So you may want to look into the card text anyway, just to be certain that you're getting the effects right when you play them. Because as we know, Yu-Gi-Oh! is a game of strange rulings. We start off with Rishadol Wendy, based on Ritual Tamer Wen. Uh, the flip effect is that you can special summon one Shadol monster from your deck in face up or face down defense position except Rishadol Wendy. The graveyard effect is that you can special summon one Shadol monster from your deck in face down defense position except Rishadol Wendy. You'll notice there's a recurring pattern as we go through that normally they can't target themselves with their own effect. So if you do hear me saying except itself that's usually what I'm referring to. Next we've got Nile Shadol Ariel based on Gishki Ariel. Uh, it's flip effect is that you can target one of your banished Shadol monsters, special summon it in face up or face down defense position, and it's graveyard effect is that you can target up to three cards in the graveyards, that's either players, and banish them. That can be used in any combination of three of those cards in the graveyard. So for example, you could do one from yours and two from theirs, or three from theirs, or three from yours, any combination that you like. Next, we have Kashadol Chaos, based on Evil Swarm Kerry Kaon, something like that, uh, as a light attribute. So you can special summon one monster using its flip effect from your hand in face up or face down defense position. Or if it goes to the graveyard, you can send one Shadol monster from your hand to the graveyard. And if you do, for the rest of the turn, all monsters you control gain attack and defense equal to the original level of that monster sent to the graveyard times 100. Next we have Shadol Beast, one of my absolute favourites in the Shadol archetype and also based on one of my favourite extra deck monsters in the game, the incredibly popular Naturia Beast. So the flip effect of Shadol Beast is that you can draw two cards and then discard one card. And its graveyard effect is you can draw one card. This is probably one of the most popular choices for any Shadol build. It usually say, sees play as a one-off or sometimes as two. Uh, it is a high level, so it is a little bit harder to work with. Can become a bit more bricky than the others, but it is really important for that draw power. Next up, we have Shadol Dragon based on Suani, Fire of the Yang Zing. For its flip effect, you can target one card your opponent controls and return it to the hand. And for its graveyard effect, you can target one spell or trap card on the field and destroy it. There's Shadol Falco, which is based on Gusto Falco. So for its flip effect, you can target one Shadol monster in your graveyard except for itself and special summon it in face down defense position. For its graveyard effect, you can special summon this card in face down defense position. So it's sent and immediately gives you a presence on board. Next we have Shadol Hedgehog based on Neo Flameful Hedgehog. Uh, so for its flip effect you can add one Shadol Spell or Trap from your deck to your hand. Or for its graveyard effect you can add one Shadol Monster from your deck to your hand except itself. As you can imagine this card sees quite some play in most Shadol builds. There is Shadol Hound which is based on Satella Knight Sirius. Uh, I think it may just be on the armor or something like that. But for the flip effect you can target one Shadol card in your graveyard and add it to your hand. Or for its graveyard effect, you can target one monster on the field and change its battle position. Flip effect monster effects are not activated at the time that it does this, except for Shadol monsters. So you can use this to kind of abuse bodies that you may already have on board. Or if you suspect that your opponent is playing some sort of deck with flip effects other than Shadols, then you can kind of abuse that too if you like. Next up we have Shadol Squamata, which is based on Telenite Unuk Kalhai. I don't know if I've pronounced that correctly, and uh, if I haven't, please don't kill me. Uh, so for its flip effect, you can target one monster on the field and destroy it. And for its graveyard effect, you can send one Shadol card from your deck to your graveyard, except for Squamata. Now, most people do send monsters, however, there are kind of niche scenarios in which sending a spell or trap to the grave from the deck uh, may come in handy. Although, most people don't really do so. 
It's worth noting there are a couple of Shadol monsters that don't follow the theme as above, uh, and they are Shadol Zephranaga, which is based on uh, Evil Swarm at Kerikaon, again, but as a dark attribute. Uh, and this is a Pendulum monster. So its Pendulum effect is you cannot Pendulum summon monsters, except for Shadol and Zephyr monsters. This effect cannot be negated. And for its monster effect, if this card is Pendulum summoned or sent to the graveyard, you can target one card in either player's Pendulum zone and return it to the hand. You must have a Zephyr card in your Pendulum zone to activate and resolve this effect. We also have Shadol Zephyr Core, which is based on Gem Knight Crystal and Shadol Core fused together. So the Pendulum effect is that you cannot Pendulum summon monsters except for Shadol and Zephyr monsters. This effect cannot be negated. And its monster effect is that if this card is Pendulum Summoned or sent to the graveyard, you can target one Zephyr card in your Pendulum Zone, except Zephyr Core, and Special Summon it. The ratios of use across these varies hugely depending on what the build is. Smaller engines may only consist of Beast, Dragon, and Hedgehog, although more pure variants will usually have some combination of these. The least played are largely the Pendulum Shadol monsters, virtually not played at all in normal Shadol builds, and Cast Shadol Chaos, the effect of which is underwhelming and there are simply just better light targets available to the deck as a whole, something that you usually want good options for as it facilitates going into El Shadol Construct. Next up we're going to take a look at the extra depth options for Shadols, uh, primarily they are fusion based, however there is a Link monster as well which we'll cover in a moment. All of them have different attributes which are required to summon them. We'll start off with El Shadol Anoyatilis, which is based on El Shadol Construct, which has stolen the powers of Necros of Trishula and fused with Infernoid Deviati. How is that for a mouthful? So it requires one Shadol monster and one water monster. Uh, it must first be fusion summoned. Neither player can special summon monsters from the hand or graveyard with spell or trap effects. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one Shadol spell or trap card in your graveyard and add it to your hand. Next, we have El Shadol App Cologne, one of the new ones, which is based on Ivigishki Mind August. This just requires two Shadol monsters with different attributes. It must first be fusion summoned, cannot be destroyed by battle. You can only use each of the following effects once per turn. So if it's special summoned, you can target one face-up card in the field and negate its effects. And if it's sent to the graveyard, you can add one Shadol card from your deck or graveyard to your hand and then discard one card. Next up, we're going to take a quick look at El Shadol Construct and Shadol Construct, both of which are based on Gem Knight Lapis. As a quick note before we proceed, Shadol Construct is the link retrain of El Shadol Construct that came out whilst it was still banned, but it doesn't belong anywhere near any self-respecting Shadol deck and can safely be disposed of in the nearest shredder. Anyway, back to this proper Shadol Mummy. So we've got one Shadol Monster and one Light Monster required to set it up, which is incredibly important with how the deck works. But it must first be Fusion Summoned. If it is Special Summoned, you can send one Shadol card from your deck to the graveyard. At the start of the damage step, if it battles a Special Summon Monster, destroy that monster. If it's sent to the graveyard, you can target one Shadol Spell or Trap in your graveyard and add it to your hand. This is probably the most important fusion in the extra deck, maybe with the exception of Winder, depending on what kind of format we're in. El Shadol Contract is just absolutely insane, uh, a must-have for any Shadol deck. Next up we have El Shadol Grista, which is based on Shadol Core, becoming a fully formed version of the head of Kern Gorgon, the anti-luminescent knight. So this requires one Shadol monster and one fire monster, uh, must first be fusion summoned, much like all the others. During the player's turn when an opponent would special summon a monster while you have a Shadol card in your hand, you can negate the summoning if you do destroy that monster, then send one Shadol card from your hand to the graveyard. You can only use this effect of El Shadol Grista once per turn, and if it's sent to the graveyard, you can target one Shadol Spell or Trap in your graveyard and add it to your hand. As you can see, there's a bit of a running theme here where you can just recur those resources they've been using to set you up for the following turn. Next up we have El Shadol Shekinaga, which is based on Construct kind of just hanging out with Apocalypse Towers, just chilling together. So this is one Shadol monster and one Earth monster required, must first be fusion summoned, and during either player's turn when a special summon monster activates its effect, while you have a Shadol card in your hand, you can negate the activation and if you do destroy that monster, then send one Shadol card from your hand to the graveyard. You only use this effect once per turn and if it's sent to the graveyard, you can target one Shadol spell or trap in your graveyard and add it to your hand. Next up we have El Shadol Wendigo, which is based on Ritual Beast Ulti Petal Fin, uh, and it requires a Shadol Monster and one Wind Monster. It must first be Fusion Summoned, and then for a quick effect, you can target one monster you control. This turn it cannot be destroyed by battle with an opponent's Special Summon Monster. You can only use this effect of El Shadol Wendigo once per turn, and if it's sent to the graveyard, 
Just like all the others, you can target one Shadol spell or trap in your graveyard and add it to your hand. Next, we have El Shadol Winder, based on Winder, Priestess of Gusto, and Pulau, Wind of the Yang Zing. So this requires a Shadol monster and a dark monster. Uh, it must first be fusion summoned. Cannot be destroyed by an opponent's card effects. Each player can only special summon monsters once per turn while this card is face up on the field. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one Shadol spell or trap in your graveyard and add it to your hand. From these, El Shadol Construct, El Shadol Winder, and the recently released El Shadol Akpalone are the ones that see the most play. Some builds will try out with Shekinaga, fewer still with Grista and Anoya Tillis, and, well, nobody plays Wendigo. We can all agree, though, that we'd still rather play Wendigo than the joke that is the Shadol Link Monster, Shadol Construct. So we're going to look at the Shadol spells and traps as a whole. Firstly, we'll quickly address the Shadol core card, since that is basically what this whole deck is based on, even if nobody actually plays the fucking card. So Shadol core's artwork is based on the head of Kern Gorgon, the anti-luminescent knight, uh, and its effect is special summon this card as an effect monster. Uh, it's a spellcaster, dark, level 9, attack 1450, defense 1950, and it's still treated as a trap. And if it's summoned this way, you can substitute one monster as fusion material that lists an attribute on a Shadol fusion monster card. If this card is sent to graveyard by card effect, you can target one Shadol spell or trap in your graveyard, except Shadol core, and add it to your hand. It doesn't really do an awful lot for the deck, especially not in the modern game, so it doesn't really see any play, but it is worth addressing nonetheless. Next up we have Shadol Fusion which is based on Gem Knight Fusion. You'll see the similarities on the screen. Uh, you can fusion summon one Shadol Fusion monster from your extract using monsters from your hand or field as fusion material. If your opponent controls a monster that was special summoned from the extra deck, you can also use monsters in your deck as fusion material. You can only activate one Shadol Fusion per turn. Next up we have El Shadol Fusion which allows you to fusion summon one Shadol Fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or the field as fusion material. You can only activate this once per turn. It is worth noting that this is a quick play, so it can be used to interrupt your opponent quite nicely. Next up, we have Nephi Shadol Fusion. You can activate this card by declaring one attribute, equipped only to a Shadol monster, and it becomes that attribute. During your main phase, you can fusion summon one fusion monster from your extra deck, that is Shadol, of course, use a monster from your hand or field as fusion material, including the equipped monster. You can only use this effect of Nephi Shadol Fusion once per turn. Curse of the Shadow Prison, which is the field spell. So each time a Shadol monster is is sent to the graveyard by a card effect. Place one Spellstone counter on this card for each sent monster. All monsters your opponent controls lose 100 attack for each Spellstone counter on this card during your opponent's turn only. Each time you fusion summon a Shadol monster, you can remove three Spellstone counters from this card and use one appropriate monster your opponent controls as one of the fusion materials. As you can imagine, this doesn't really see all that much play. Next, we're going to take a look at Peru Shadol Eon, which is target one Shadol monster you control, send one Shadol card from your hand to the graveyard, and if you do, the targeted monster gains a thousand attack and defense, but it is changed to face down defense position during the end phase. This card really doesn't get played. Next, we're going to look at another one of the newer cards, which is Resh Shadol Incarnation. So you can target one Shadol monster in your graveyard and special summon it in face up or face down defense position. You can banish this card and one Shadol card from your graveyard, then activate one of these effects. Change one face down defense position monster you control to face up. Change one face up monster you control to face down. You can only use one Reshadol Incarnation effect per turn and only once that turn. Next is Sinister Shadow Games, which allows you to send one Shadol card from your deck to the graveyard and then you can change any number of face down defense position Shadol monsters you control into face up defense position. And finally, we can briefly discuss a not yet released trap card, at least in the TCG, Shadol Ruck. As a side note, the name will probably differ once it's translated into the TCG, but this card is due to be released in Rise of the Duelist. So quickly, we're going to take a look over the effect of Shadol Ruck. So during the main phase, you can fusion summon one Shadol monster from your ex deck by banishing fusion materials listed on it from your side of the field or graveyard, but it cannot attack directly. You can then send one monster your opponent controls with the same attribute as a summon monster to the graveyard. You can only use this effect of Shadol Ruck once per turn. From these spells and traps, once again the lineup differs depending on the build. On the assumption you'll be playing it as just an engine, most would run three copies of Shadol Fusion, as this offers the most benefit in terms of advantage, keeping in mind the types of deck that would run this. But as a pure deck, it's common to see Shadol Fusion, El Shadol Fusion in varying numbers, and sometimes a copy or two of Res Shadol Incarnation. It's not yet known whether Shadol Ruck will really see play or not. 
So lastly for this video, I just wanted to note some common tech choices and extenders that are used in Shadol variants. I won't list them all, and of course, this only covers what is used at the time of recording, and of course, it's not exhaustive. So first off, we'll start with Predaplant Ophrys Scorpio, Darlingtonia Cobra, and of course, Vert Anaconda. So this is an insane fusion fetching package that's really easy to fit in. The first two playing, being dark helps plenty for those who are running the likes of Law of Darkness to dig deeper into the deck as well. They're usually used to abuse instant fusion, pseudo fusion cards, and super polymerization. It's in Orphis Scorpio in hand. Uh, with any single discard allows you to climb into a Link 4 through Cross Sheep, a combo which you can see demonstrated on this channel to which I'll provide a link. I'll most likely put that on the screen now. I'll also drop it down in the comments for those of you who want to go and fetch it from there. Next up we have Performage Package, Trick Clown, Damage Juggler and sometimes Hat Tricker. Trick Clown becomes the ideal dump into Grave target for Construct, particularly with Fairy Tale Snow being banned and probably for good reason, although I really just want her back. It instantly gives you an extra body on board. Damage Jugger offers some utility as well, being able to fetch out the Trick Clown or Hat Tricker if you want to check an Arga target for a free extender. And it doubles up as a second Shadal Construct Fusion target for if you've already seen the Trick Clown. Next, we should cover Cross Sheep. This card is absolutely bonkers in this deck. It offers easy link climbing and free advantage. Definitely try this out with some playtesting with this must-have addition for your extra deck. Next we have Armageddon Knight and Dark Greffa. The two brothers of destruction are always poking their heads out whenever there's a dark based deck that can be abused. Armageddon Knight more so than Greffa in this particular deck, but both of these can offer great utility to the deck, being able to dump any of the Shadows as needed. Keep in mind though that Greffa's discards are a cost so they won't trigger Shadows. Similarly, you can also use Mathematician to cover the same kind of function. There is also Instant Fusion, which can be used to fusion summon Winder in one go, and is often used in conjunction with Cherubini, the Burning Abyss Link 2, in a variety of decks to lock the opponent out. It can also be used to pick out a huge array of fusion monsters to work from, including Thousand Eyes Restrict, Millennium Eyes Restrict, Invoke Rajin, and many more. There is also Super Poly, a card that is absolutely insane, can clear out the opponent's board, can be used during either player's turn, and acts both as an offensive and defensive powerhouse that cannot be responded to. And if you run a Predator Plants, it's even searchable. We also have Foolish Burial, which is used to dump any monster from your main deck into your grave. Need I say any more on this one? And finally, on this list, you can also run Allure of Darkness. This adds draw power to the deck at the cost of banishing a dark attribute monster from your hand. Be careful, though, because you'll usually want those dark targets, which will also usually be Shadows, in your grave. So use this one wisely. Hopefully this video has been super informative to you. If you haven't already, you should definitely go check out the Burn and Abyss one that I've already released. And I do plan on releasing some more of these, although we'll keep those under wraps as to which ones we're planning to release. As a side note, if there are any that you want to see, as mentioned at the beginning of the video, definitely drop that down in the comments. If you have anything you'd like to add to this guide or you think I should have covered, or anything you think that was done particularly well, or in fact, if this was incredibly helpful for you, as I hope it is, then definitely let me know down in the comments too and leave a thumbs up. If you haven't already, Already, you should definitely hit subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content I put together for you enough to hit subscribe and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment. Before you go be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility. Thanks again for checking in and I'll see you in the next one.